Here's where the guys crashed. I don't see any raft. There's a paddle. Let's get all this stuff together. Check out what we got. Looks like a throw rope. Good amount of line in it, too. A couple carabiners. Climbing quality. Dry bag. Hopefully, it's still dry inside. Ooh. Somebody had a brain come to the jungle with a machete. Two machetes. Two brains. Magnesium stick and two machetes. Cutting edge and fire. Well, there's two choices. There's follow the colder than hell river or go through the jungle. The situation is pretty simple. To get down this river, we need two things. Wood to make the raft and cordage to put it all together. Here's exactly what I'm looking for. This vine works great in water. I'm going to squeeze this thing. Look at that. It's got great tensile strength, very malleable. I'm going to grab as much of this stuff as I can. This is going to be perfect for what we need. Wow, look at the cavity that created. It's going to go pretty quick. Timber! A lot of chop a tree down in pretty much a minute. out of the brush only to find all of our work is about to float down this damn river. Cody. Let me get the raft. I have to tow this raft from where it's at now to safety. But this river is not your local YMCA swimming pool. Even in shallower water, you can feel the energy of the river. You OK? This current keeps pulling me out. Amazon is the world's largest river because of the sheer volume of water it carries. Make no mistake about it, this river is very violent. It may look like a sleeping baby sometimes, but it's very powerful. It's going to be bending to the left here, Cody. Looks rougher up there. Yeah, I hear some water a little bit. We turn this dog leg, and boom. Right in front of us, the worst case scenario, rapids. No, nope, there's no way. The shore, the shore, Cody, the shore. We're on a raft made out of balsa wood and vines holding it together. There's no doubt in my mind, if Cody and I go through those rapids, we're not coming out the other side. The shore. This is literally the oh factor. We've got to get this boat to the side as quick as possible. Oh, my paddle just broke. This ain't working, dude. Go, get out of the boat. Cody, unhook all this shit quick. Get out of the boat. We gotta try to save the boat. Dude, get out of the boat, Cody. Go. Get out of the boat. Swim. So much for the raft. That would have been ugly. Well, you know what? We got a lot of mileage out of it. You know, this cruise just turned into a foot patrol. You ready to do some walking? Yeah. 
Our original plan was to build a raft and follow this river all the way out. That's not happening. Again, make a plan, plan on making changes. Now we're on plan B, we're bushwhacking. Joe has an idea from the Kafan people here. He wants to build a shelter called an Ashanga. Essentially, it's kind of like a static hammock with a lean-to over the top, and I'm all for that. Wow. It looks really, really cool. The roof, it's very simple. Notch the trees, put it at about a 45-degree angle, attach the poles to the tree, put cross beams across it, put thatch on the roof. That'll keep you out of the rain. <laughs> Not a room at the Hilton, but it looks good. Oh, that looks awesome. Awesome, dude, that is freaking bad. Grab this end right here, dude. Be careful, the splinters. And just lay it down, white side down, green side up. Yeah, like a glove. I've spent my days in the jungle when I was in the Marine Corps. I've never built a shelter like this. I've seen it, but I've never built one myself. And I'm quite impressed with myself right now, actually. Heck yeah, man. All right. This is Barbasco. The cool thing about this plant, it was used for millennia to poison fish. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it up. Luckily, it has a pretty shallow root system. <sighs> Essentially, what I'm gonna do with this Barbasco root is use it to prevent the fish from breathing. The toxin in the Barbasco root will be absorbed through the fish's gills and into its bloodstream, causing temporary paralysis. However, the toxin will not have any ill effect on humans who consume the fish. Once these fish know there's poison in the water, like anything alive, they're gonna try to get away from that poison. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a dam there where it kind of narrows down to try to impede exit of those fish. I'm seeing flashes of the fish, so I know they're there. Now I got a good look at one. It's a Hondia species, really commonly eaten here. They're a wider fish, they're jumpers. So if these are gonna jump, they're gonna have to get a running start because I'm taking no prisoners on this one. Now that I have my dam built, I'm taking this Barbasco root and processing it down. I'm just gonna create surface area to allow that toxin to get out into the water and then be dispersed right there. I'm essentially kneading out the toxin through the fabric of my wrap, and you can see it disperse readily. It's a white color, it's almost like pouring milk in the water, and I can see it going on down the current and doing its business. But for now, it's a waiting game. It's been about eight minutes now, and I'm not giving up hope, but and not a lot seems to be happening. So you can see they're agitated, but they're not compromised. Being pissed off and compromised are two different things. So I'm just gonna wait and see if it takes a longer duration for this toxin to do its job. There. I've waited another minute or two and all of a sudden I see belly up literally one of the fish float to the surface, just like a cartoon, and I'm no bingo. I'm gonna scoop this one up, throw up on the bank, dispatch it so it's not going anywhere. I know there's one more in here. I've seen it swim around. You know, for me, while I'm doing this, I'm doing what the locals in this area did to feed their families for thousands of years. It's a total rush. That's a good size Hondia fish. That's a lot of protein there. So one for Joe and one for me, and on we go. A lot of these leaves look the same in the jungle. So this is a mitel leaf, it has a distinct personality. It has this deep green band. The reason we're getting this is this essentially is like aluminum foil of the jungle. What's cool about this leaf is it's fairly burn resistant. It also gives the food a flavor, not unlike just 
a special herb, and when you bend it in a 90 degree angle, it doesn't break. So for some, something that can get you know, quite stew-like, like fish, it's bomber. So essentially we have a wrapping package, a great way to cook the fish that I got for Joe and myself. I'm making a tinder bundle out of moss, put it in a pile in the center, and I'm gonna use the magnesium and use my knife to cause a spark to ignite this thing. The flint on the stick can generate sparks of over 5,400 degrees Fahrenheit, which will easily ignite the magnesium shavings. That's what I'm talking about. What do you think, Cody? Do you think these things are done? Try one. Ah. Oh, yeah. Is it flaky? Oh. Yeah, it's really flaky. Mm. Dude, you hit a home run. Wow. You know, we're settling in for the night. We've got some food. Watch out for the bones. We got the shelter up. I got a fire going. Bueno, bueno, bueno. Field hygiene here, real quick. Put my socks right here. Hey, do you mind? Huh? Just put it on your side. Doesn't it smell good? Thank you. Being perpetually wet out here can really be a problem, especially having boots on. How they looking? Jesus, pretty wrinkly. You know, all the native peoples here went barefoot, and they still do. I know. So what do you say? Join me, Luke. Join me. Come to the dark side. <laughs> Not a chance, bro. Not a chance. <laughs>